after last week for your announcement. Oh, you came. I came. That was nice of you. Thank you. Thanks for doing it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been wonderful, mm -hmm. uh, really. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by the kindness of people all over the state. And I, I, know, I think it's because they're frustrated mm -hmm. uh, and disappointed, frankly, in Governor Scott and his leadership style. And, and I think what they want is um, somebody back in the governor's mansion who truly cares about people first and foremost mm -hmm. and realizes that, you know, when you have the honor of holding that position, uh, you should truly act as a servant mm -hmm. uh, of the people, a public servant. And I take that very seriously. And I think that um, making sure that they're thought of first and foremost, whether it's, you know, kids in school, uh, students at our universities, mm -hmm. um, you know, the environment being taken care of, uh, ethical leadership that's open and transparent to the mm -hmm. press and the people. Um, all of those things matter, that you fight for voter rights. Um, you know, I mean, I think all of that is something that people miss. Talk to me a little bit about your supporters and the base and sort of who you're after. Kind of I'm after everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding. I, I mean it. And, and, and I think uh, and I hope that we have an opportunity to bring people back together mm -hmm. to some degree. I mean. The thing I was most proud of as governor uh, before was that the tone that we had changed in Tallahassee, really all working together, mm -hmm. Republicans, Democrats, independents, um, to try to help out in the areas like education, uh, protecting the environment, um, voter rights, mm -hmm. expanding early voting hours, and not suppressing voters uh, like this administration has done. I mean, there's so many contrasts, I could just go on and on. but. Um, but I'm, I'm a happy warrior, and I am optimistic about the future and, and very optimistic about Florida. Well, and some of your, your former allies and maybe friends have come out in the past week saying some pretty harsh things. What's been the most surprising thing you've heard or the most shocking? Uh, well, all of it is, is disappointing. I'll put mm -hmm. it that way. I'm not a person that's drawn to anger uh, very easily. And, um, but, I, but I have been disappointed mm -hmm. um, by some, I will confess that to you. But listen, I was raised in a Judeo-Christian Methodist home. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the idea is, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, they, they hurt to a degree, mm -hmm. uh, to be candid. But, you know, I, this is a contact sport uh, politics, and it's a tough business. And I'm an old football player. I'm mm -hmm. ready. I'm ready for it. And, and. I wasn't just a quarterback, I played linebacker one time too. So you got to be able to, to block and tackle and and be ready for what comes, and, and I'm ready. And, and I'm, I have no fear about this race. Um, so, you know, they can say whatever they want to say. I'm going to talk to the people of Florida. This race is not about me. It's about the people of our state. And, you know, the more the opponents are fixated on me instead of really what this race is about, which is for the future, um, I think the better it's going to be. A couple of the issues to touch on that you mentioned in Jeff's show. Yeah. You talked about Medicaid, the decision not to expand Medicaid. If you were, when you're elected governor, will you expand Medicaid? And, well, and with the help of the legislature, right? <laughs> yes. And, and, and I think it's, well, think about this. This issue is so um, gut wrenching to mm -hmm. me because, it, as you know, it's about a million of our fellow Floridians because the governor didn't act harder mm -hmm. and, and with, with more energy. Uh, to get Medicaid expansion accomplished, even though he said he supported it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, actions are, are stronger than words. And, you know, about a million of our fellow Floridians will be without health care. Mm -hmm. They are right now, as we're speaking here. What does that mean? I mean, think about that in real human terms. Mm -hmm. It's not just a number. These are people, a million families. And, and somebody in those families may already be sick. Mm -hmm. And if they are, what's going to happen to them? They're going to get sicker because they aren't getting health care. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, our friends in Washington want to provide it. They, you know, they're offering up these sums of money to, I think it's like $52 billion over a 10-year period mm -hmm. or whatever the number is. I mean, it, it's, it's enormous in its implications. But some of them aren't just going to get sicker. Some of them are going to die. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how a, a governor who's supposed to be the top public servant in Florida and understand that you and the people are the boss, and work every day to help them, doesn't help them more and get that done, mm -hmm. is beyond me. Do you think it would have just taken a couple of phone calls to expand it this year? Or what well, we'll never know, mm -hmm. will we? And, and, and what we do know is those calls weren't made, and I think I said it you know, in talking to Jeff, 
The speaker, Will Weatherford, said he never got one call right. from Governor Scott to say, you know, let's pass this thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is that? Except, you know, less than candid. You talked a little bit about medical marijuana being the right thing to do. Why is that? Why is this a, a worthy issue to, for Floridians to well, have? Number one, the motivation behind it is um, one of sympathy and compassion uh, for those who are suffering and in need. And, and, and you know, my friend and my law partner, John mm -hmm. Morgan, is the driving force behind it. And, and I got to congratulate him for what he's doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it takes courage to do that. And, and he's got it. And I, I love him for it. So, you know, what you have is a situation here where if you have a real doctor prescribing mm -hmm. medical marijuana for somebody who is suffering uh, and needs that in order to not suffer, how can you be opposed to that? What do you think is your greatest hurdle that you're going to have to face in the next eight months, year out? Uh, deception. There is still, there is deception. Still as well. Deception, mm -hmm. which is being perpetrated on the people of Florida now mm -hmm. uh, with the advertising that Governor Scott's doing. Uh, deception. And, and $100 million. Yes. I mean, that's a daunting task. Think about it. Think about it, Jen. If you decided you wanted to be governor of Florida and you had to make a decision about what you're, you're going to go through and what your family and your friends are going to go through, if $100 million is going to rain down on you, mm -hmm. that's a lot to contemplate. And they're not throwing roses at me, as you know. Right. And they're going to rip me inside and out. And so that's the most challenging part. But the most exciting part is the opportunity to serve the people of Florida and have somebody in that mansion who really does care about them, really does think about them, uh, really will fight for them instead of big corporations and big businesses. I'll fight for small businesses and the middle class and the people who need help the most. Do you think you can match the fundraising capabilities? I have no idea. I'm just working as hard as I can. I keep my head down. And it's not about the money. It's about the people. Mm -hmm. This is a race about people of Florida, and that's what I'm focused on. And I guess finally, what do you think your greatest strengths going forward and maybe weaknesses that the people can... Um, people weaknesses, about? there's not enough hours in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe right. I should have announced sooner. But, you know... <laughs> do you I, think that's hurting or at all? I, I don't know. We'll find out. You know, next November I'll let you know. <laughs> the jury will be in, you know. Mm -hmm. um, strengths, genuineness. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I cannot tell a lie. I, I speak from my heart. And I think people know it, and, and they know me. And what would you say to all those people who say maybe the party changes <coughs> wasn't so genuine, but maybe that, which, where is the real Charlie Crist for all those changes? Real Charlie Crist is right here. Mm -hmm. I am who I am. And I had to leave that party because it really left me. And when you have a party that, as I said earlier, is you know perceived as being intolerant toward gay couples, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, unaccepting and, and difficult to immigrate immigrants. And, you know, I'm the grandson of an immigrant myself. Uh, you know, anti-women. You name it. You go down the line. That, that's not what Charlie Crist believes in. Mm -hmm. I believe in welcoming everyone. You know, I believe in being kind to all. And, you know, the, at least the leadership of the Republican Party today does not. Mm -hmm. And so what do I say about being genuine? I'm as genuine as you can get. I mean, you know, it would be maybe easier to have stayed in that party and said, you know, I'm going to be genuine by sticking with something that I think has gone bad. And unfortunately, you know, there are some Republicans who probably feel that way. And I would tell them, you know, let, set yourself free. You know, you don't have to do that. So it takes courage to make a change. And I'm proud that my mom and dad raised my three sisters and me to be courageous. You mentioned immigrants. One of our Facebook, we put it out there, this is coming in today, one of our Facebook friends asked what your opinion was on um, giving illegal immigrants driver's license and their ability to get driver's license. Do you think they should be able to get something with state and get in-state tuition, that kind Don't of thing? Don't you want people to get employed, mm -hmm. to be able to have a job, to be able to drive to a job? I mean, what's what's wrong with that? And and you know, I I hope that eventually they become legal mm -hmm. immigrants, like my grandfather did. And, and the way he did it, I mean, he was 14 years old. Think about this: when he immigrated in 1912 from the Greek island of Cyprus, and the way he became a citizen is that he joined the military, he joined the army, he fought in World War One, 
He was honorably discharged. I'm really describing the Dream Act, yeah. uh, which I support strongly. And uh, and I don't know where Governor Scott is on it. I, all I remember is that he said he wanted to have an Arizona-type law in Florida. Well, that's pretty anti-immigration, right. to, to be blunt. And, and I'm the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. We're, our country's the melting pot. You know, and if, if America's the melting pot, Florida is, is okay. you know, the pivotal example of what a melting pot should be, and can be, and is. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have people here, as you know, from all over the world, and from all over our country. You know, they're from Michigan, and Pennsylvania, and Ohio, and New York, uh, but they're also from Guatemala, and Cuba, and, and France, and, you know, all over Latin America. Mm -hmm. So, we're the melting pot of the melting pot. I mean, I, I think we're a great example of what America is and can be. One of the other things was, you spoke out recently that you now support gay marriage. Mm -hmm. I think when you were in office, the state passed a, or when you were running for the Senate, the state passed a law banning that. They did. How? And I regret that. I was going to say, what do you, what, what changed your mind? How did you shift here? I think I've, I've seen the light. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and even the Pope recently said, who am I to judge? Well, I've come to that conclusion too. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think great credit needs to be given again to President Obama. In an interview that he did, not last spring, but the spring before, and I believe it was with Robin Roberts, mm -hmm. much like we're doing right now, yeah. and she was asking him about gay marriage. And in essence, I'm not going to get the direct quote, but in essence he said, you know, I've always been for civil unions, mm -hmm. as was I. And he said, but you know, the more I think about this issue and the more I, you know, look into what would God be happy with, we're all children of God, mm -hmm. then, you know, who am I to judge and who am I to tell other people who to love or, frankly, who am I to tell other people who to marry? And there you have it. And I think our whole society has, or a lot of it, has done the same thing. Will Floridians eventually overturn that amendment? I hope so. I hope for that. And, and, and I think that, you know, again, if I have the opportunity to serve as governor, that's another one of the things that I want to move forward on. You know, I want to move Florida forward in education, move Florida forward in solar energy, move Florida forward as it relates to, uh, you know, equality uh, mm -hmm. in Florida, uh, all of these things. And we can do them. We can do them. I'm, I'm very hopeful about it. I know you have to get headed off to your next place, yeah. so thank, thank you. you. Thank you.